Flutter developers like myself love building apps. So for example, I'm going to give you a hypothetical situation. So you face a problem, right? You forgot to sanitize your hands before you enter your home and it's bugging for you every single day because you want to be a germ-free human before you enter your house. Then when you walk into the house, you think to yourself, maybe I should create an app to remind me to sanitize my hands before I enter my house. A sanitizer reminder app. And what this app does is that it will remind me to sanitize my hands before I enter my house. And the thing is, I might not be the only one who thinks about the same problem. Oh my god, billion dollar idea! Then you quickly open your laptop and you write your first line of code. Hours of coding after work, months after month, debugging the app. And finally, you build your app. You send it through the Play Store. You send it through the App Store. And the people at the App Store say, oh, this feature doesn't really work. Then I'm like, oh my god, what? And then you try to lie us with that. And finally, your app has been released into the App Store and Play Store. And you think to yourself, after many, many hours of grueling bugs, stack overflow questions, GitHub issues, you can finally reap the reward of thousands of downloads in your app. And then when you look at how many downloads you see, you only see 10 downloads. All right, maybe you say, okay, maybe this is a little bit too quick. Maybe I'll wait for another week and see whether the downloads will increase. So one week later, the downloads actually increase to 20 downloads. And they say, okay, maybe it takes some time. Give it a month, right? So one month later, you see your app, you see the developer console, you see the app developer console, and then it increase to 25 downloads. Hello darkness, my old friend. Has this happened to you? To tell you the truth, most of us have experienced this. You got an idea and you want to build an app about it. However, after building it, there's only a few people who are using it. So earlier in this hypothetical story, if you were to listen properly, there was one thing that was missing. Do you know what's that one thing? Something that developers who have an idea to build an app always miss out this step. Have you figured it out? It starts with the letter D. No, I'm not talking about your dick. The word is demand. Demand is where people are using your goods and services and in this hypothetical story or this video, it's an app. In the best scenario with demand, people will actually search for your app inside the App Store and Play Store and then after that, they will download it and they will love it and after that, they will share with their friends through word of mouth and more and more people are going to download and then your app is successful because a lot of people download your app. So that's what I think a successful app is. So we have the end, the end that we want to achieve for but let's go back to the start. Before you start building the app, you need to first find out whether your idea has a demand. So we call it validating your idea. To find whether your idea is trendy, you can go to Google Trends, which is a website that allows you to search for different trends that usually people search on. So for example, if you were to go to Google Trends and you were to type in sanitizer reminder, and if the Google Trend seems to have a spike, that means your idea is something that people are searching for inside Google search. Otherwise, then you can just pew, scrap the idea. The second way that you can find whether your idea is actually something that people search for is to go to Google search. So you can type in sanitizer reminder and you can see whether people have actually searched for these kind of terms in the auto-suggested box that usually opens up when you type a word. If there is many many type of statements that has the word sanitize reminder, great job. If not, then there isn't enough people that are searching about these terms. Once you are satisfied with the result, whether it's good or bad, the next thing that you can do is building a landing page. So what's a landing page? A landing page is basically a single page website that allows you to validate your idea. So this landing page will explain the problem, the idea, and the solution. So this website or landing page will explain to the people who visit your website whether sanitizing your hands is actually very important before you enter your house. So at this stage, there isn't any app that's being built. So how do you know if people are interested? Is it the number of visits to your website? Not really. 
inside the landing page, there is this text field that says, if you are interested for any updates on this idea or this sanitizing reminder app, leave your email down below for more updates and progress. So if people are interested, then they will type in their email address and this is where you can quantify on how many people are interested. So if there's only 10 emails for three months, then that means your idea isn't exactly something that people are looking for. But if there's a thousand signups in three months, then that's amazing because that means there is a demand for your sanitizer reminder app. Not only that the amount of emails validate the idea, the emails then will give you an opportunity for you to build rapport for the people who sign up for the newsletter. So for example, in the newsletter, you can share articles that says, if you were to sanitize at this period of time, there is a low chance of getting germs. I don't know if that is true or not, but you can some sort see an idea of giving information to those people who are interested. At the same time, in this newsletter, you can always update on the progress of your app. So for example, you have two designs for your homepage, the one that is in red color and the one that is in blue. So you can always ask or interact with your audience or the people in the newsletter, which one is better, the red one or the blue one. And if you have no idea what to share, you can always share why you come up with that idea. So what I'm trying to say is that being consistent in your content is more important than having the quality of the content. With this, how can I build my landing page? Should I build it from scratch? No, there's so many services out there that allows you to build landing page. So for example, a Google form is a very simple way for you to collect emails. So you can say, hi, this is my idea. And then if you're interested, then put in your name and your email and I will update you on the progress of the app. Then Google form has this feature that validate whether the email is actually an email. All right. So that's pretty good. However, one thing that I found out when I use Google forms for a landing page is that it's pretty boring. It's pretty plain. So the landing page tool that I'm currently using is MailChimp. So MailChimp is a service that allows you to build landing page, websites, and many, many more stuff. So I really, really love MailChimp. Not sponsored, by the way. MailChimp sponsored me. One thing that I like about MailChimp, the other marketing platform doesn't have, for example, ConvertKit. I love ConvertKit, but sorry, MailChimp is way better. Is that MailChimp has a lot of features that's under the free account. So you can build websites at the same time. You can send newsletter, automate emails and such, which is very very good and it's free it's not a fancy looking website builder or landing page builder but it gets the job done so for myself i have used mailchimp to create a landing page for my flutter web course like my flutter web with firebase and my flutter web portfolio course so how i usually do it is basically creating a landing page inside mailchimp and then putting the link inside my YouTube description. Then once I have enough numbers to know that, oh, this is something that people are looking for, then after that, I will actually build the course. Once I have launched a Flutter web course on Udemy, then I will blast an email through the newsletter that I've created through MailChimp. And the thing is, only a few people buy it when I blast it out, but that is better than nothing. And I was really proud on the work that I've done to help people learn Flutter Web. And initially, it actually all started through a Google form. So this landing page is just a tool for you to get those emails and build a relationship, a newsletter and whatsoever. With this tool, where are you going to shout out your idea? There is many, many places that you can actually share. So the first place that I share is my YouTube channel. I managed to sell my Flutter Web with Firebase course with only 300 subscribers. Personally, 300 subscribers back then wasn't a lot because I was aiming for a lot more. But with that subscribers, there were people actually very interested in the course. And once I finish it, I blast it out through the email, even with 300 subscribers and like maybe less than 50 people inside the newsletter, I was able to get people buying my course and liking it. The thing about having a YouTube channel is that you have to be committed because not everyone is going to subscribe to your channel, which is fine. So it takes a long time for people to actually build a rapport with viewers and then once they subscribe once they like you then they want to know more about you and that's where people know about what products you are trying to build 
which is great. YouTube channel is a lot of effort, a lot of consistency, but I personally think it's very, very worth it. And one thing to take note is that if you were to build a product, make sure that the product is the same topic as the YouTube channel that you have. For example, if I were to build a fitness program for programmers, would my YouTube channel be the right audience? You never know, maybe I'll try it, I don't know. So therefore, your YouTube channel has to be in sync with what you're trying to build. So for example, I'm building this learning platform for Flutter. And the thing is, if I were to build something else, I think not a lot of people will be interested. Second place that I would recommend is the subreddit. So subreddits are basically like a forum where people with the same mindset of a certain topic will actually post about things that they like about. For example, Flutter subreddit. So if you were to go to the Flutter subreddit, you probably will see Flutter posts, right? But you won't see anything like, for example, uh, exercises or food. You will probably have to go to those subreddit that has to do with food or exercise or fitness, right? So if you were to have an idea to, you know, help with the Flutter development, then maybe you can shout out in the subreddit of Flutter and maybe put it inside the subreddit of React Native wouldn't be so great. Another place is Facebook groups. So Facebook groups ain't exactly something that I will go for. I've never really explored, but it is like subreddit. So Facebook groups are basically a place where, like I say, like-minded people go to and they post stuff and it's more interactive or as interactive as people who are inside subreddit. So there are other places such as LinkedIn, TikTok and Twitter that you can shout out your ideas. In summary, having a place to validate your idea, whether it's inside a subreddit or Facebook group using a landing page, is going to save you a lot of time in energy, money and effort rather than building something that nobody wants. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of this video, subscribe down below and comment down on any strategies that you think that helps you grow on the app that you're trying to build. That's it. Stay safe and all the best. Bye. Bye.